Good morning and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that don't know me, I am Josh, the driving instructor. And today I'm here to share with you how we can avoid smashing into that curb. So some of you out there might be thinking, well, Josh, how does that affect me on my driving test? So let's start there. Now, the first rule for your driving test is to hit that like and subscribe. No, just kidding. But you should do it anyway because it helps others find this information and helps them improve their skills so they can pass their driving test just like you. So what is it the examiners expect when pulling over on the left or on the right on your driving test? Well, the first rule is pretty simple. You don't mount the curb. If you're not sure what I mean, here's a picture. This is mounting the curb. You can't do this because you're invading the pedestrian's area of safety. If you put it from your perspective, if you were standing on the curb, walking down the road and a car suddenly came up on the curb, how would you feel? You'd feel pretty scared probably because it's quite dangerous. So if you do mount the curb, that's considered a serious fault. This is an instant fail. If however, you gently brush the curb, this will just go down as a minor normally. However, I'd try and avoid this at all costs because what you consider a brush when those nerves are going on your driving test, the examiner may very well consider a mount. So avoid this at all costs. Now, when you pull up against the curb, you will be expected to pull up between 20 and 30 centimeters, not zero and 30 centimeters, 20 and 30. If you're too close to the curb, you're going to brush your wheels, which is going to damage your wheels and possibly damage your alloys. And believe me, for someone who's been there and done that, they can easily range from £500 plus each. So you don't want to be doing that. So anywhere between 20 and 30 centimetres will be absolutely fine. The examiner will not be getting out with a tape measure to measure, just for your information. So do not panic too much about it. Just try your best to make sure it's between approximately around that mark. So now how do we actually park next to the curb without smashing our poor wheels into the curb? Well, this can take some time and practice as you can see from my poor alloy. However, with a bit of patience and practice, it is fairly simple. So this is how I teach it. The idea is to look as far down the road as you can. Do not look at the curb right outside the car because what tends to happen is your hands follow your eyes, which often leads people to drive straight into the curb, which is not what we're trying to do. So what we do is we look ahead as far down the road as we can at the end of the curb. So then what we're aiming to do is we're aiming to just gently glide the car towards the curb while looking at the end of the curb by turning the wheel up to a quarter of a turn. Now it shouldn't even need this much and I'm using the word gliding on purpose. Just like if you're skateboarding, you have no wheels on a skateboard, you have to glide. There should be no sharp turning involved. So just as a demonstration, I'll show you what to do. So I've checked my mirrors and I've put a signal on and I'm turning the wheel less than a quarter of a turn and now I'm straightening up just at the end. I'm actually slightly turning right to come back away from the curb slightly and keep those both those wheels in line with the curb. Now, while I've done this, I've been looking at the end of the curb and that way my hands are not immediately dragged across to my eyes, which are looking over here. Instead, my eyes are looking at the end and that's, that's why my hands turn ever so gently, just bringing us gently towards the curb. Now, there is another method to do this as well. The other method is to ask someone that is licensed on your car to park your car in the correct position against the curb. What you can then do is sit in the driver's seat, look where the curb is positioned on the center of the window and put a piece of tape or some form of marker there. So in this case, I can see my car is positioned just in the middle of the window wiper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a piece of tape in that position, right there. This means when I'm pulling over on the left side of the road, I can now try and position that curb on that tape, which should give me a close approximation of being close enough to the curb. You can also use another marker like my windscreen wiper, that large bit there. When I'm sitting in a normal seated position, that large part on the window wiper is actually positioned on the curb. So I can also use that as a marker. Now, every car is going to be slightly different. So do not use my markers for your vehicle. This is a good method. However, if you're brand new to driving and you're just looking for an idea of where to start. Okay, so now we're gonna look at four of the top mistakes that are made when pulling over to the curb. 
Number one, the car is not straight when they pull the car into the curb. This leads to your front wheel being close to the curb, but your back wheel still being out in the middle of the road. Number two, going too fast when you try to pull over. Make sure you slow the car down before pulling against the curb. Number three, they don't straighten up when they're gliding towards the curb, and instead they just hit the curb with the front wheel. Number four, the final one, they straighten up too fast, leading to them being too far out in the road. That is the end of this chapter of Don't Curb It. If this helped you, help others come and see this video by liking and subscribing. Thank you very much. See you again soon.